Hi there, Ronnie Dahl, four wheeling at westernaustralia.com. Manual versus automatic. So which is better for off-road? Stay tuned and let's find out. A frequent question I get asked a lot, should I buy the manual version or the automatic version of my vehicle? And this is a very important decision to make and you have to be comfortable with either manual or automatic. So if you're not sure which one you want or which one is best for off-road, well, I've broken this video up into sections, so we'll get down to every single little detail you need to know so you can make the best decision for yourself. And yes, I have driven both automatic and manual vehicles, and this vehicle here is a manual, but does that mean manual's better? Well, you'll find out. Manual transmission versus automatic transmission in on and off-road general situations. And we'll start with fuel consumption. A manual will burn less fuel than an automatic version of the same make and model. So you're gonna get more kilometers per liter and more miles per gallon out of a manual vehicle. And now we come to control. Which gearbox gives you more control off-road? Well, some people are probably gonna disagree with me here, but you will actually have more control with an automatic than you will with a manual. And then in some other situations, you're gonna have more control with a manual where the automatic won't have control. So we'll get to those parts when we get to the terrain because that's gonna change. So it's not that simple. When it comes to transmission overheating, it's more than likely going to happen in an automatic when you give it hard intensive driving on a beach or any low range full driving, you will need to upgrade that transmission cooler. Wearable parts. An automatic is generally all right if it's serviced. A manual transmission on the other hand is quite wearable. You have the clutch plate and the flywheel and can be prone to premature wear and failure for those who abuse or don't know how to drive their manual vehicle in soft sand and other situations. So that is another point to think about. Flat battery situation. No jumper cables are around, no jump packs are around. You can push start or tow start a manual vehicle. When it comes to an automatic, you can't. You have to actually physically tow it out of there with another vehicle. So if you're by yourself and you've got a flat battery in an automatic, you're going nowhere. Gearbox damage out on the tracks. A manual, more than likely, you're still gonna be able to get out of there. You may be able to, to crash box it out and that means you've lost your clutch or you lost a few gears or something. You can avoid those gears if you lost your clutch, you can actually smash it into gears at the right RPM, but you're gonna do more damage to your gearbox. An automatic, once that's damaged off-road, you're more than likely a sitting duck. And if you spring a leak in your fluid, you're done too. An automatic gearbox relies on fluid to drive. So you have destroyed your gearbox which is cheaper to repair and replace? The manual transmission. The automatic, quite expensive. Static inertia, one of Newton's laws of physics. When you have a vehicle stationary at a set of lights, say this three ton Land Cruiser, it's a manual, gravity pulls it towards the ground, right? You need a certain amount of force to make the vehicle move because of static inertia. So, in a manual vehicle, that's no problem. You, you select your gear, you hit the accelerator, you pull the clutch up. At the right time, of course, you're moving straight away. In an automatic, an automatic transmission uses fluids and you need a build up of pressure before the vehicle's gonna start moving. So, therefore, you're gonna have a slight delay from when you hit the pedal to when the vehicle moves. And 
this has a bit of a factor when it comes to off-roading as well. For example, it can help you give control for when you go over rocks and other situations when you've got things in front of you. So that is a good thing, but also a bad thing. So my point here is a manual is more responsive than the automatic. Rightio, now on to different types of terrain and we're going to start with sand. When it comes to sand driving, so this is all your general sand tracks, beaches, you name it, small dunes, we're not talking about big dunes yet, an automatic will absolutely kick the living crap out of a manual vehicle, especially if it's soft sand. Those gear changes in an automatic are just so smooth, you cannot replicate that in a manual vehicle unless you're a professional race driver or something. You cannot replicate it. The reason why is because with a manual, once you put that clutch down, there's a pause between your uh, power and momentum. So by the time you get it from, say, third to fourth, you're going to lose that little bit of acceleration or movement. So you need to be over revving before you change, so you keep your, your momentum. Whereas a, an automatic, you just cruise along. Automatics kick ass on sand. However, sand dunes, this is where things get a little bit different and we'll go more towards the manual. See, a manual vehicle, when you head towards a sand dune, you will select your gear at the base of the hill and that gear you'll stay in until you reach the top or you don't reach the top. Now, unless you're really, really good at flicking it down into a gear at the right time, then you can do it and that still has an advantage over the automatic. Because with an automatic, even though you can lock your gear, you have drive one, two, three, some have one, two, three, four, you'll need to select which gear you want the final gear to be. So if you leave it in drive and you go up a hill, it's just going to select whatever gear it wants to do. It can shift down, it can shift up, and usually at the worst bloody time. So, yes, you can lock it in second or third, but it still may drop gears at the wrong time or shift up in a gear at the wrong time. It may shift down and then back up. So therefore, a manual transmission on sand dunes is better in my opinion. Rock driving, rock crawling, whatever you want to call it, it's a situation where you have big boulders or big rocks or hard obstacles you need to go smoothly and carefully and slowly over. Well, if you are an expert at driving a manual vehicle, then it's hard to say that the automatic is better than the manual. However, for most of us out there, an automatic is easier and safer to drive than the manual. So therefore, the automatic, I have to say, is better in a rock crawling situation. Also, you can just hold it there in drive. Even if you don't move and drive, it's resting against the rock. You control the amount of force you need to give it before the automatic gearbox actually engages and starts moving because you have static inertia in play again. Remember that Newton's law I mentioned earlier? Whereas opposed to a manual transmission, you have instantaneous force or power when you're clicking in the gear and you lift that clutch. And the other thing, with a, with a manual, you gotta play with the clutch a bit to move over objects. So you're gonna wear your clutch as well. So there's another reason that an automatic is better for rock driving. And when it comes to mud, I have to say, in my opinion, that a manual vehicle is better than an automatic. And the reason for this is you have control on your rapid acceleration. As I said before, you have that static inertia or you, you need that amount of force applied which there is a delay on in an automatic vehicle. So when it comes to those situations, you need to spin those tires to clean your tread blocks because you're going down a hill or, or you're going through a sticky situation. You need a manual vehicle to just quickly bang down into a gear or hold that gear for a lot longer and you can just flick all that mud out. 
Whereas an automatic, it's got a bit of a delay. You may decide to just change up in a gear when you apply more acceleration to maybe even stop the wheel spin as well. A manual in that situation is better than an automatic. River crossings. Now you're about to cross a river. You have a manual vehicle. What do you do? You pick second gear low and then you go for it. You do not want to change gears once you're in the water because you do not want water up in your clutch because that may cause clutch slippage and you may get water into your clutch bearing as well which will give you troubles down the track. But let's say you have an automatic on the other hand. You cross that river, you should still pick your second or third in, in your gearbox. Don't pick drive because that'll go too fast and will encourage it to change up in gear. You can just go on through that, through that river crossing and you can even change with your automatic shifter as well as you're driving. You can stop, you can keep going. No water's gonna get into that gearbox. It's sealed. So therefore, in my opinion, the automatic wins the river crossing. We're now onto hilly terrain, uphill and downhill. We'll start with uphill. When you're driving uphill, if you are in a manual vehicle and you stall it, well you need to have some pretty good skills if you're on a uh, very steep hill to get that clutch at the perfect spot. So you can take off without too much wheel spin or without not giving it enough and you start going backwards. And a manual vehicle is very dangerous on a very steep hill when you're stuck like that. You need to play with your handbrake. You gotta, you know, you really gotta know what, what you're doing and you really gotta practice it. But you can also do the hill start and that is you leave it in first gear low. You just start it from there and then it, it'll wear your starter motor but most vehicles can actually handle this and then you can get going in first gear low. So that's a good tip for you actually. When it comes to an automatic, if you get stuck on a hill, who cares? You, you still got drive, you can still move backwards a bit, you can go forward a bit. You don't have to play with, it, with a clutch. Your vehicle is not going to all of a sudden just career down the hill. So an automatic is a lot safer for going uphill. So now it comes to downhill. And this is where things can get a little bit complicated, so I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. When it comes to a manual vehicle versus an automatic vehicle, Generally speaking, a manual will have a lower or a slower first gear low than an automatic will have. So when you go downhill, you can use your engine braking in first gear low on most four-wheel drives, especially diesel versions. They are so good. That is what they are just perfect for. Going downhill, engine braking, feet, feet off the pedal, concentrating your steering, that's all you need to do. When it comes to an automatic, you're going to have your foot on the brake pretty much the whole way down to the bottom. Now, of course, if it's a modern automatic, so for those guys that are going, no, nah, that's not true. Well, if you're in modern automatic, you're going to have probably better control than a manual because you've got your downhill assist, you've got all this fancy stuff, and the gears, you know, the vehicle will control its descent on the way down. You don't have to do anything, really. All you've got to do is steer it. But when it comes to the older version, of an automatic, you really gotta be careful there. And if it's a really long, really long hill, you may get brake fade by the time it gets to the bottom. Especially if you're following a manual vehicle, you're gonna be right up the back of him or her the whole way down because they are moving slower than you are. We've pretty much covered everything that I can think of for automatic versus manual, manual versus automatic, whichever way you wanna say it. And in my personal opinion, I think the automatic is the better choice when it comes to off-roading. It's easier to drive, it's safer to drive, and it's better to drive in most situations off-road, most general situations. So why do I drive a manual vehicle when I say that in my opinion an automatic is better? Well, it's because I find the manual vehicle to be more fun, more entertaining, and keeps me aware off-road and for some reason I just don't like automatic vehicles even though I do go and drive them from time to time it just reminds me of how much I like the stick versus the automatic so what do you think what is your opinion which is better automatic or manual put them down below 
Are there some things I haven't covered? Put them below too. I would really like to hear from you. And if you'd like to see some videos on gear selection, there's one here and there's one here. Please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support the creation of videos like this, you can go to patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.